from a fallout shelter in Hollywood. It's the, 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 the Tom Micah Show. That is good weed. That is good weed. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning into the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Langa Show brought to you in part by Knight Rider. The series, more muscle, bigger missions, heart-pounding action. Tonight at 8, 7 central on NBC. Hey, thanks a lot for being here. Thanks for tuning into the program. Uh, this hour, we're talking about pot. Now, I know very few of you out there actually smoke pot because it's against the law, and I'm sure most of you are obeying the law. But for those few of you uh, lawbreakers and slackers out there who smoke pot, none of those in here, are there? I don't think so. Anyway, for those of you who are pot smokers, uh, we are going to talk in this hour uh, with Steve Bloom and Shirley Halper, and they are the authors of a book called Pot Culture. <clears throat> The A to Z Guide to Stoner Language and Life. And thank you both for coming in. Good to see you. Thank you for having us, Tom. Hi there, Tom. Let's uh, talk a bit about your book. Uh, what was uh, Where was the idea uh, the uh, gestated? How did, how did you come up with the idea to write the book? Well, not surprisingly, I was hanging out with some buddies in college uh, about 13 years ago and having a little session one night. And <laughs> I said, you know what would be really fun? An encyclopedia of stoner slang. And then it took me 13 years to actually develop that idea into a book proposal and sell it. But, you know, for those who say that stoners are uh, unmotivated or slackers, this is uh, this is about the opposite of that. How much new stoner slang was created in those 13 years? <laughs> a lot. A lot has changed, that's for sure. And we had a couple that, uh, you know, were very unique to our worlds. But I think the generational gap was bridged between me and Steve, who is, you know, more of the Cheech and Chong era, and I'm more of the Harold and Kumar Pineapple Express era. So it came together nicely. She calls me the old guy. <laughs> oh, boy. Let's, now, let's talk about this for a moment. First of all, uh, an encyclopedia of slang. It, it's been my experience that for all the pot smokers who are out there, uh, many people don't really know much about pot or pot culture. They just have some friend who has a friend who hangs out at a high school uh, schoolyard who uh, brings pot over, and they smoke pot, and that's pretty much their connection to the whole thing. And then there are other people who are immersed in this culture. Um, talk to me about those people, the people who are immersed in it, the people who don't get involved in it at all. Well, there's a language that we speak. You know, that's what we're doing with this book to, uh, to define the terms of how we express ourselves to each other. And we tend to speak in a kind of an underground language. Tommy Chong wrote the foreword and he said a lot of the words come from jail, come from underground expressions that suddenly make its way into mainstream society as time goes on. So, uh, but it's not just about slang because, you know, it's just the language of marijuana. What do we, what are the words we use to express ourselves? Who are the important people in our world? Uh, where are the important places, music, songs, TV, movies? And that runs throughout the whole you know, storyline of the book. And how do you make an apple bong? Very important. <laughs> yes, yes, that's true. Let's uh, talk for <laughs> as we talk about some of the slang. Uh, have we ever come up with a final determination on 420, for example? Absolutely. Um, 420 originally was believed to be a code for a marijuana arrest in progress, the 420 code. The police are, got you under arrest. It's 420. Turns out, and, and that was in California, and turns out the code in California is like a five or six digit number, so that's wrong. Um, there is the, uh, the idea that there's the Bob Dylan song, Rainy Day Women, uh, 
number 12 times number 35. That's the song that says everyone must get stoned. Add that up. Uh, multiply it, not multiply add it up. Multiply that. Multiply though. it, and it's 420. That's not the reason either. No, the real reason is these guys in Northern California were involved in the dead scene back in the early 70s who went to San, Ra- San Rafael High School, and they came up with it. They kind of proved it to everybody at High Times when I worked at High Times. They came forward and said, hey, you're sort of telling a story that's not quite true. You know, 420 did start in the deadhead scene, but it wasn't about the police code. It was about a time of day where kids were getting out of school and they wanted to get high. So it's, they decided on 420. Wow. And now uh, what happened with some of these codes, many of which were created so you could say to your buddy in uh, the, the, you know, the, 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 the broad daylight, you could say, hey, let's go smoke weed. Uh, they, they become so well known, you have to come up with a new code. Absolutely. It's changing all the time. I mean, you, you go to tell somebody it's 420 in front of a cop. Uh, <laughs> cop's going to know what you're doing. At this point, probably. Yeah. Our book's not helping either, I guess. And that's <laughs> but, you know, the words like trees with a Z at the end of it, you know, stuff like that. You want to smoke some trees? Yeah. And, you know, and more recently, like in the 90s, chronic came up, and that was like a big buzzword. And, and more recently, it's the Kush thing. You always hear about Kush. You see big billboards in L.A., 1-800-GOT-KUSH. Um, so that's sort of like a more recent phenomenon. So, yeah, it's constantly evolving. It should make for, uh, you know, a few more great additions. Yes. And it's also the, all the old terms, too. Tea, you know, smoking you know, a drag uh, on weed or bummers or even those terms, all those words that came up from the 30s to the present because a lot of the jazz musicians created a lot of the slang for marijuana. Now, well, why does pot have all of this slang and this whole culture? I mean, uh, there's other ways uh, to get high. Uh, the, the alcohol doesn't have all this uh, terminology, all the slang. Uh, smoking cigarettes doesn't have all that terminology and all that slang. Why pot? It's against the law. Yeah, yeah, that's part of the reason. It's on the down low. It's underground. You have to speak a language to each other so that somebody else who's sort of straight doesn't really know what you're talking about. And I think stoners in general are very in tune to their culture. They're into music. They're into movies. You know, they're into what's going on at the time, and they reflect that. And stoners have a way of, you know, banding together, communicating in one language. You know, it goes across demographic lines and gender lines and age lines, everything. It's also the creativity of language and words. I think stoners are very creative when they're high, so they come up with new terms. They come up with new ideas and products. They come up with grinders and vaporizers, things like that that never existed. I love going into those stores that sell vaporizers and water pipes, whatever they're calling them now. <laughs> uh, there's some of the stuff is ingenious. I can't believe the amount of thought that goes into creating these devices. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, you know, stoners are creative. We don't always do anything with our creativity, but there are the few that do, and, <laughs> and two, two of them are right here. Well, we have the section Stoner Innovations in the books. Like one of them is the lighter leash. You know, hold on to a, a, a leash with you know, a lighter, puts it on a leash, put it onto your belt so that somebody can't steal your lighter. Pretty brilliant, right? That, that is. Oh, that, some of this stuff is really brilliant, though. I mean, some of these gadgets with the pumice stones and the, uh, uh, some, I mean, these bongs, that they, they, they look like they could only have been devised by Rube Goldberg. It's pretty amazing stuff. Well, the glass blowers really took uh, bongs into a whole new direction. You know, the, the whole deadhead scene with all the glass blowers, that kind of changed everything. I mean, you know, somebody shouldn't pass you a, you know, a pipe that's not glass at this point. It's sort of, it was like a quantum leap in, in uh, the technology and the quality quality of how you can experience marijuana. We're talking with Steve Bloom and Shirley Halpern. Their book is called Pot Culture, the A to Z Guide to Stoner Language and Life. It's available in stores, available online. They also have a website, potculturebook.com, without a space, potculturebook.com. You may have a question or a comment for Steve and Shirley. You can call us here at 1-800-5800-TOM. It's 1-800-5800-866 here on the Tom Likas Show. Uh, you know, during the Richard Nixon administration, uh, he had his uh, pit bull there, Spiro Agnew, the vice president, uh, who used to speak out about drugs, drug references in songs, drug references in pop culture. And uh, for a long time, there seemed to be this heavy hand coming down on songs, song lyrics, album covers, movies that made references. I remember Saturday Night Live in the 70s had plenty of pot references, but as time went on, after John Belushi died and what have you, uh, the drug references were were shrunk down to nothing. And now, in the last five years, six years, there's all these Seth Rogen movies coming out, and pot is in almost every movie with Seth Rogen. It just is. Uh, Saturday Night Live is back to pot and uh, other drug references. What happened over the years? 
Well, there's a couple of things. Um, Tommy Chong would say that in conservative administrations is when, you know, the more liberal minded get most rebellious. So it's a form of rebellion against basically the government that, that we're stuck with right now. Um, that's one reason. The other reason is that Hollywood has come around to the idea that these movies make money and they cost very little to produce. And Seth Rogen is a great example of someone who can become an A-list movie star basically playing variations of the same character for the last, you know, three or four films that he's done. So um, I think that he really blew it open for us. I think Harold and Kumar had a lot to do with it. And everything is just sort of converging. Our book is a part of it, too, I think. And Weeds. And Weeds. Oh, right, of course. Weeds was, uh, we say in the introduction that it was really like the impetus for this book. We should point out, because the vast majority of America doesn't have Showtime, Weeds is a TV show. That's right. On Showtime. That's right. It's on Showtime. It's about a woman who's basically a suburban housewife, um, whose father, uh, not whose father, whose husband passed away, and she becomes a drug dealer, a pot dealer. Actually, it turns into harder drugs and towards the end. But, uh, yeah, it was, a, it was a big, successful show for Showtime, and, and it really inspired us to think, wow, people have really come around to this idea that pot is not so sinister that it can be part of a, a plot of a major serial drama. So why can't we do a book? You know, why can't Seth Rogen do another movie? How many Americans do you think, obviously, Obviously, we'll never know because a lot of them will never tell. But uh, how many do you think smoke pot? What percentage? I don't know, I'm not sure the percentage. We can figure it out. But the government figure is generally 25 million in the last month. And the uh, the figure uh, for daily smoking, regular smokers, hardcore smokers, about 5 million. So those are the people that we want to all go out and buy our book. <laughs> <laughs> but, Tom, you know, I listen to your wine show on Sundays. Yes. And if you can have a show for wine connoisseurs, I mean, why can't there be a book or something for, for pot connoisseurs? Oh, well, well, you're barking up the wrong tree here. I, 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 I certainly have always been a supporter of the legalization of pot. I've always been a supporter. In fact, I'm a libertarian. I'm a supporter of the legalization of everything. Um, you know, let people be responsible for themselves. And um, I don't care if they're smoking pot or I don't care if they're shooting heroin. I don't care what they're doing. Uh, you know what? You should be responsible for yourself and you should be responsible for your own behavior. And then you should be responsible for the consequences also. Uh, that's my attitude. Um, I've never been opposed to the legalization of pot. And I have smoked pot. And that's not a secret. I've talked about that on the air, too. So, uh, yeah, if you can have a show about wine, you can have a show about pot. The problem will be getting advertisers on a show like that because it's illegal. That's right. Well, we always wanted to do Radio 420. I guess that might be a little di more difficult than we thought. And ends up on the Pacifica stations, the NPR stations. But stations that have to sell advertising are not going to do a pot show. Gotcha. Because they're not going to be able to get anybody to advertise on a show like that. That's the problem. And I imagine uh, that that's also a problem for, for magazines that uh, want to uh, write about this. Well, subject. you get in the niche advertising, you know, who right. cater to the audience. You get the vaporizers and the hydroponic you know, companies and yeah. lots Lights and seeds and things like that. But that Procter cater. and Gamble does not have a big ad no, campaign no, in high times right now, no, do they? No, they didn't, and they should. There should be all kinds of munchy ads through up and down high times. Pringles, they don't do speaking of Procter and Gamble. How about Pringles, for God's sake? But that's because it's illegal. If high times was legal, uh, high times and other magazines would probably have a huge boom in advertising support because it would become the wine connoisseur magazine, the cigar aficionado. It would become that, and it would be okay and acceptable to advertise. Uh, before we take the break, uh, let, let me just ask a general question uh, about pot. Uh, look, it, it, no longer are we worried about being in song lyrics. No longer are we worried about it being in movies. No longer are we worried about being on television. Uh, there's radio shows where people openly talk about smoking pot and what have you. Um, why is it still illegal? Who is the who's against pot now? Uh, well, the hardcore, you know, fundamentalists, the conservatives. Um yeah, they're holding strong. The, the the drug war establishment doesn't want to give up what it's had for so long. Marijuana is illegal since 1937. It's locked in. They don't want to give it up. They is all that? have jobs. They make money from it. Uh, they forfeit, the forfeiture brings uh, uh, value back into uh, the police stash. They get you know cars. They get all kinds of things. They get cash. They get all kinds of stuff when they go in after you know drug users or you know or big dealers. Um, so they don't want to give it up. They have their job and they're locked in. See, I've always believed that the government always is looking for new ways to pull you over and come into your car and see what you're doing in there. Whatever it is. 
And, and pot smoking, the best reason for making pot illegal is, is because you can pull people over and say, I think you're smoking a joint, and then go through their trunk and their glove compartment and all those other places to see what's really going on in there. Well, you're absolutely correct. I mean, that's where most of the people get arrested for marijuana is driving in their car, get pulled over, the smell of marijuana, and next thing you know, car searched, they find something, you know, you're in jail. Uh, and, you know, that's where people just have to be super careful. You know, the police are looking, and they can go in your vehicle. We'll take a break. We'll come back with our guests, Steve Bloom and Shirley Halperin. Their book is called Pot Culture, the A to Z Guide to Stoner Language and Life. Their website is potculturebook.com. Your telephone call's coming up next. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. I think you're my dad. Really? Really, because... Did I F your mom? I learned, I learned so much from you that I've been getting laid so many times. Is your mom Mexican? <laughs> yes, she is. Yeah? You, I might be your dad. The Tom Likey Show. The Tom Likas Show, 420 on the West Coast, and how appropriate. We're talking with uh, Steve Bloom and Shirley Halperin about their book, Pod Culture, the A to Z Guide to Stoner Language and Life. Let's go to your calls here, 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Dave on the Tom Likas Show. Hey, Tom, how's it going? I think it's going great. Hey, I had a question. Uh, my daughter uh, recently turned 18. She's got a prescription on, on for medical marijuana, and it um, seems like a bunch of her friends have it. And, you know, I don't know too much about it, and I didn't know if these guys could, you know, give some insight on that. Now, I, as, of course, I'd love to have a prescription also, so, you know. Well, uh, you know, there is a procedure for getting a medical marijuana prescription. You have to go to a doctor and um, provide uh, evidence of symptoms that you may have. You know, they're pretty common symptoms that you can get away with, like headaches and toothaches and insomnia and stress. Um, and they don't exactly, when you say you've got headaches, they don't exactly put you through an MRI or anything, No, do they? they don't. No, they don't. They basically, um, Doctor, you know, I've got a headache. Really? Where does it hurt? My head. All right, here you go. <laughs> do, you, do, you need, do you need a lot of documentation from, like, your your, your general, you know, doctor to, before you go in there? Or can mm, you just head on in there? Not necessarily. Um, if it's okay, I would put a, a website um, that has really great information about this called Greenbridge Medical. It's right here in Los Angeles. Um, it's a, a medical marijuana uh, doctor's office, and they uh, can really explain it all to you. But basically, you have to be a California resident. You have to pay, I think it's $150 a year. And uh, and you can go into any of the 300 dispensaries that are in the greater L.A. area. Um, you know, you definitely have to be 18. As far as kids under 18, I don't think that they can get it. Um, yeah. Another place for information is the California norm, Normal website, uh, canormal.org. They have uh, up and down the state, plus they have uh, doctors where you can go. And I want to uh, wish everybody uh, happy 420. That's right. Is there any... Oh, no, no, I'm ahead. sorry, Tom. Go One ahead. One last. Any, any disadvantages of having the prescription? I mean, is it publicized? Can people find out about it easily? Or, or you know, is it on the down low? Or... Well, that's a question that's been asked, uh, you know, that it, you are on the state rolls. I mean, the, the state will know that you are a medical patient. Uh, so if you don't want that, then don't uh, register. You don't want your boss to find out. You don't want the law enforcement authorities to find out. Your health insurance company. Yes, has if been you're planning on getting a job with the Secret Service later on or the uh, military, uh, I imagine that's going to be searchable and available. Yeah. I, I say it's time to come out of the closet and go to the, uh, get your card and, you know, go to the dispensary and do it that way. I mean, you could go to your friendly dealer. That's great, too. Keep them in business, but, you know, why not take advantage of the dispensaries if you have an ailment, Ill, illness? But they are for people who are legitimately sick. Let's not forget that. Let's not just, you know, shove that aside. Yeah, there are a lot of people who are legitimately sick and need medical marijuana to stimulate appetite and to help them with other ailments. So, Of course, I must say, being honest here, is uh, it's rare that you go to a party where several people at the party have a medical marijuana card. And uh, you never knew they had chronic illnesses until they whip out uh, whatever they've just purchased at the local marijuana store. Uh -huh. Well, what does Dennis Perone say, Steve? All medical use, all marijuana use is medical. <laughs> <laughs> or Willie Nelson says it's the greatest cure for stress. Well, I guess that's why everybody's always experimenting with it. Like President Clinton, they experiment with marijuana. Yeah. Politicians are constantly experimenting. 
you know, we don't think about it then we're, when we're using, we think, oh, it's all recreational. But, you know, it's, it is medicinal. People use it to alter their consciousness, consciousness to be in a, another place. Maybe it's, you know, uh, steering them away from some pain that they have in their neck, uh, helps them go to sleep, uh, you know, takes their mind off of something that's a problem. You know, you take pills for a lot of things that would allow you to do that. Why can't you use marijuana instead? Well, that's like people who drink alcohol of all kinds. And they're asking, you know, why do you drink beer? Why do you drink wine? And they always come up with some story. Oh, I like the taste. I like the nose on this. I like, come on. Number one reason most people drink is, is to get a buzz. That's right. That's the number one reason. You know, I, I, I appreciate all the good things about wine, but I will tell you, when I pour wine into a glass at my home, most people are going to get high. They're, they're not doing it so they can appreciate uh, the bouquet. That's right. They're not. <laughs> Truth has to be told. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Kelly on the Tom Likas show. Hey Tom, long time first time. Thank you. Uh, I am a medical marijuana patient myself. Actually, um, I went through the process about a year ago. One hundred and fifty bucks. You don't have to take anything in there to get it. You go in there, say you have headaches, whatever. They'll give it to you. No problem. <laughs> I uh, I actually got it because I have stomach disorders, digestion disorders, trouble eating, trouble sleeping. So I'm on disability, actually. I can't work. So you're not There's like the guy I talked to one time. I asked him, how did you get the medical marijuana card? He said, right. he said I have anxiety. I said, anxiety? Right. He said, yes, anxiety anytime I can't get pot. <laughs> exactly. It's, uh, so getting it's pot relieves my anxiety. See, the whole the whole industry has uh, been abused. Medical marijuana is being abused. Pe there's people that really need it, and there's people that just abuse it. Well, let's let's talk about this for a second. It, it, there are people who say that medical marijuana is just a way of making marijuana more acceptable. So ultimately, a marijuana store will not be such an unusual sight. Uh, although there are legitimate benefits to people to smoke pot when they got cancer or AIDS or whatever, um, the idea of making this legal is to, to take baby steps towards normalizing marijuana into the culture. Is that true? That is true. I, I think there's some truth to that. But, you know, I think anyone who smokes pot regularly, not just once every so often at a party, is self-medicating. And that's that's the, the God's honest truth. And, um, you know, it's like with cigarettes and with alcohol. I mean, you know, why do you smoke a cigarette? Because you're stressed out or, you know, you just had a big meeting and you want to just take a breath. I mean, everybody has their own reasons. You're, you know, you're the libertarian. You know about this. And Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I don't see any, I don't see what makes it so different from, from other vices, you know, like, like tobacco and alcohol. I think out here there's this fine line between recreational and medical use. And, uh, that line is not clear elsewhere around the country, New York where I live. You know, there's no medical pot. It's not legal, so you can't use that as an argument or a discussion point. Out here, you can, and it's grayed the areas quite a bit as to you know, you know what is the what's the legality of marijuana in the state uh, because there's so much marijuana available through the dispensaries, and that's caused problems. You know, mostly for the federal government, the state. You know, some of the state governments and localities around here don't care for it, but by and large, it's been a boom in California, and the feds don't like it, and hopefully. You know, if Obama gets into office, he'll stop the feds from cracking down on the dispensaries and let people who legitimately need their, you know, medical marijuana get it. Uh, while you mentioned uh, Barack Obama, uh, do we know anything about the opinions of the two candidates about pot? I mean, we can guess what they might be, but do we really know that Barack Obama would make it easier on pot smokers? Hey, when I was a kid, I inhaled frequently. That was the point. That's what Obama said when he was asked about smoking marijuana. So, number one, he's admitted his use. He's admitted in his book. Well, so did Bill Clinton. But Bill no, Clinton he said he couldn't inhale. And whereas Obama made a joke about it, that you know that was the point. I smoke so I you know I inhaled so I could get high. But does that automatically mean then that he would make it easier for the other pot smokers? No, it just means that he's more aware. You know, he's aware of it. You know, he sort of jokes about it. You know, he's from the community of people who were smokers. You know, presumably he doesn't today. But he's not that old. You know, he smoked in high school and college and probably a little bit later. Um, and, you know, put it probably down because, you know, it's a 
sort of a tough item to deal with, you know, when you're running for office. So you just sort of back off on that a little bit. Now, on the medical question, he's been great. He's called for the end. Of, he says the drug war is an utter failure. He's called for the decriminalization of marijuana in, 19, in 2004. And I think it's just, you know, up to us for, to hold him to that. He said these things. He hasn't made it a big part of his current campaign. He has talked quite a bit about medical marijuana. He's very familiar with it. and He's in favor of it, and he would stop the DEA crackdown here in California. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. We're here with Steve Bloom and Charlie Halperin. Their book is called Pot Culture, the A to Z Guide to Stoner Language and Life. It's available at stores. It's available online. You can also visit their website, potculturebook.com. No spaces, potculturebook.com. 1-800-5800-TOM, that's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Jake on the Tom Likas Show. Hey, hey, Tom, how's it going? I love the show. Thank you. Hey, uh, I got a question. I was uh, riding my bike about a month ago, and I had a, I had a piece on me, and I got a possession ticket. They caught me. And now I'm going oh, to... Oh, wait, wait, uh, wait. You were riding your bike? You're talking about a bicycle? A bicycle. So, so a police officer, what, pulled you over? Yeah, they just saw me. For no reason, they pulled me over. For no reason. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Were you wearing like a pot T-shirt or something? Did you have something that to caused probable cause or what? <laughs> no, it was a beach cruiser, so that's probably what did it. Okay, <laughs> I you know I, I've ridden a bicycle many times. I've never been pulled over by a cop. Well, yeah, it's partly where I live, so I just look out of the normal. So my question was, uh, it's like a ticket I'm going to on Friday. Is there is there any way uh, you know about to get that down to an infraction or anything like that? What's the difference? You know I mean, it's decriminalized here in California, so if you just pay your summons, I think you'll be fine. Okay, and about the record, would you guys know about? Like, possibly staying on your record or anything like that? I don't know about that, honestly. Um, but I think if it's just a fine, it, it, it wouldn't be on a permanent That's the whole record. point of it being decriminalized. Yeah. It's not a criminal offense, so I don't think you should worry about it. Nice. Okay, what, be cool. what beach were you on, just out of curiosity? What, pardon me? What beach were you on? You said it was a beachcomber? No, I was on a beach cruiser. Oh, beach cruiser. Oh, yeah. gotcha. I just look out of it. Just look out of place. Hi, Jake. Hey, hey Tom, you take me out with a bond hit? <laughs> of course I can. Here you go. one 800 tom That's our telephone number. Lewis on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing? Great. Yeah, um, I'm just right here at school, you know, waiting to go to class and, you know, hearing you as, as always. And I thought this was a very good topic to jump into. Is that because you are stoned right now? Uh, no, I'm actually being clean for about six months, actually, because... Uh, it takes a lot to... of time for that stuff to get out of your system, I see. Oh, no, it's usually a month, I heard, but um, just because of... You know, I think we're going to rewrite that. Excuse me? Never mind, go ahead, I'm sorry. No, actually, I've had the the medical card for about four years. It started back when uh, I was rear-ended by some lady, and um, you know, I I seen it in the paper, went out, and you know, it actually came through, and I got it, and I loved it. You know, four years of great pot, you know, and uh, my wife preferred me actually smoking pot because the pills were they would put me on some Vicodin and some other painkillers. I was I would get, you know, I had weird effects with the painkillers more than the pot. So, you know, now with the economy, I'm actually going to El Camino to do air conditioning and in order to pass these tests, you got to... Are you going to El Camino to fix the air conditioning or to study air conditioning? To study air conditioning. Oh, I see. Yeah. So... All right. And your question is what? Um, no question. I just wanted to... Try. Just say what's up. And it takes how long to get that stuff out of your system? How long is that? I heard about a month. Okay. I think they're wrong. No, he's right. It is about a month. <laughs> oh man! But the okay, so the economy slow, slowed him down. Um, maybe he can't afford to buy to buy weed anymore. But what were we saying yesterday? Legalize weed, save the economy, right? I think so. Bring it above ground. Look at all the money that's underground. Actually, with the reason that I stopped because um, my prescription ended in April. And they, around that time, I live in Compton, they closed down a few of the dispensaries in Compton. Well, one in Compton, the guy that um, started them up, they closed up a few of his because he was 
having little crooked things with his shop. So, you know, I think that sucks because a lot of the people that actually needed it, those people that were bipolar and, you know, other different ailments that were going there and, you know, they they had to go somewhere else because this guy was doing crooked things with his shop. Well, Lewis, it's been a little slice of heaven here. I want to thank you very much for calling in. I do. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Steve Bloom and Charlie Halpern are here. Their book is Pot Culture, The A to Z Guide to Stoner Language and Life. More of your telephone calls are coming up. Tom Tom like it. It. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. You know, you're very funny. I like you. Cause, you know, you, <laughs> you, 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 oh, I like you. The Tom Likey Show. The Tom Like Show from Hollywood. 1 800 5800 Tom is our telephone number. We're talking with Shirley Halpern and Steve Bloom. Their book is Pot Culture, the A to Z Guide to Stoner Language and Life. The web address potculturebook.com. Now, Steve, you also have the Celeb Stoner website. What is that all about? Uh, that's a marijuana news website with a focus on drugs and celebrities. So anything happens with uh, anybody getting arrested, uh, not just arrest, but that tends to be the news angle. Uh, for instance, like Ron Tater Salad White got arrested recently, the uh, you know the uh, blue collar comedian, you know stuff like that. We'll cover all of that on the site, and we'll also cover you know Bill Maher's got a new movie coming out, Religious, and he's sort of a favorite of the site. So we'll cover what the so called top celeb stoners are doing. There are about thirty of them on the site, so we cover you know movies, mo- uh, music. Uh, they're in the news. Uh, you know, it's just kind of a extended marijuana news website. Who are the big stars who are admitted pot smokers? Well, there's Snoop Dogg, Willie Nelson, you know, sort of top of the, you know, uh, of the, uh, uh, you know, the number one guys. Uh, uh, Bill Maher. Bill Maher, obviously. Woody Harrelson, uh, Jack Black. I mean, there's really, you know, some others who are a little less known, but they've been photographed smoking pot, like Cameron Diaz, Misha Barton, people like that, uh, and uh, Matthew McConaughey, Owen Wilson. Paris Hilton. Yeah, there's just sort of a long list of people out there. I mean, pretty much everybody in hip-hop. Pretty much everybody. <laughs> Are you all going to include the NBA in there? Uh, yeah, well, that, a lot of them smoke, too, according to Josh Howard. He's another one, Josh Howard. It could be anybody. I mean, right now, Sarah Silverman's about to be named the next top celeb sonar. She won a tough race between her and she beat Barney Frank. So it's really yes. wide. You know, it's like a politician, a comedian, a TV star, an activist. Every, it is room for everybody on the website. Is it true that Shaq was singing, tell me how my ash tastes? Was that what you were saying? <laughs> Sounds right. Just checking. Alright, uh, 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Oscar on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Paul, how's it going? It's going okay, sir. Okay, I got a good question. Uh, I heard, uh, I know if you're a common marijuana user, it takes like about 30 days to get in your system. However, I kind of read in a book that says uh, if you probably do it once a month, uh, uh, THC stays in your system for three to four days. Is that true or not? That is true. Um, it's it's sort of like a, 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 a descending scale, you know, depending on how much you use. If you're an everyday smoker, then you're going to have to clear out for a month. If you're a, a weekly smoker, then clear out for a week or two weeks, you know. So, or you know, you smoke once a month, then you're probably in pretty good shape. When is your drug test coming up? Uh, I, I don't do it, but I've been craving it so much that that's why I wanted to find out. So I'm going to take like about four or five day weeks so I can do it again. Before before you have your test, I mean, you could go and get some products that will help clean out your system. Uh, there's a lot of them, you know, online or in High Times or different magazines. Um, so you can do that. Also, drink a lot of water. You just have to dilute the sample. Oh, okay. All right. Well, thanks a lot. I appreciate that. Can you take me out with the bottle? Whip? Certainly. Here you go, Oscar. Eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Ryan on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Those were some big lungs. <laughs> yes. 
Hi, Tom, and uh, hello, Steve and Shirley. Thanks for being on the show. Hey, Ryan. Um, I'm a regular smoker, have been quite a while. I don't know how many years. Um, my girlfriend is not. In fact, she grew up pretty uh, pretty sheltered, pretty strict. Her dad's the chief of police. Her uncle's the sheriff. And she's never touched it, not once. Been drunk once in her life, that's it. And she knows I smoke, but does not like it. And she has never asked me to quit for her. She has only ever told me that if you're going to quit, you're going to quit for you. Otherwise, there's no point. And not that I'm looking to quit anytime soon, maybe, who knows, but I would like to try to convince her, find a way to approach her with the fact that it's not as terrible as she sees it, because she's only seen it ruin the lives of marriages of other people and, you know, her friends and whatnot. And so her only experience is, is a negative one. And I'd like to figure out how I've tried to approach her with it and, you know, convince her it's not so terrible, but... Uh, I got it. Here's how you do it. You go to her and say... Come on! If, if Come she, on! I, what are you doing? I, I, Step it up! I, I, I don't know what she'd do. <laughs> I don't see anything wrong with this scenario. If your girlfriend smoked and you're a guy who smokes all the time, that would mean less weed for you. So I, I, I think this is the best possible scenario. I mean, I, I married. My husband doesn't smoke uh, maybe once or twice a year, and... You know, we have a very happy marriage. I think that's the way to do it, you know? I have found that if you're the pot smoker and the other person is not a pot smoker, but, the, oh, she's really cool, you know, she lets me do what I want. It, it's like when you are an atheist and you live with a born-again Christian and they say, well, I'm going to respect you, you, I, you respect me, I respect you. But eventually they're sitting next to you and at some point they say, I can't hold it in anymore. I have to talk to you about Jesus. And it's the same thing with pot smoking. <laughs> Uh, every time I was the pot smoker and I was with somebody who didn't pr prefer to partake, they would say, oh, well, you do whatever you want to do. It's all your, that's your thing. You do what you want to do. But eventually it comes up and eventually they start yelling at you or giving you the cold shoulder or whatever. Okay. This hasn't happened to me yet, but I guess it's something I should prepare for, huh? Well, you know, here's Ryan and his, uh, his girl is the daughter of the chief of police. Well, that's a problem. <laughs> that's a problem right there. But I mean, to convert your girlfriend, um, to convince her otherwise, I think the most convincing thing would be for you to h hold down a job and, you know, be a good boyfriend and do, you know, everything as you're supposed to do or whatever. I, I don't see what the big deal is um, when one person smokes and the other doesn't, as long as they're not preachy about it all the time, which it doesn't sound like she is. No, she, yeah, she really isn't. Not at all. Um, it's more I would just like her to see. I haven't been able to, I haven't been able to find a way to figure out how to show her that it's not as terrible as she thinks. Give her a cookie. Yeah, exactly, a brownie. I don't want her to necessarily partake. Yeah, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't ask her to. Because Believe me, you'd prefer that. Well, You're, maybe, but... It uh, has to be said. You, have, you would prefer that. I, oh, yeah, I probably would, but out of respect for her, I, I'm not going to She's gonna never going to get off this subject. You know what? She's going to tell you. She's going to be cool about it. The minute she gets you to marry her, that's when the pressure's going to be put on. Yeah, well, I, I have a feeling that it's... We're having that, kids, and you can't put that stuff away. Why do you have to... Do, I thought you would change. We're having children here. <laughs> right? Yeah, that sounds about right. That's what's going to happen. Yeah, well... We, by the way, you know, way I know, you know I know this? I've gotten this call a hundred times just this year. Sure. Guys call up going, well, you know, my girl was always cool with it. Then we got married, and then she stopped, but I didn't stop. And now she wants to know what I'm going to stop. And we get this all the time. Well, she's never asked me to stop. Um, because you haven't married her yet. Well, yeah, well, we'll see about that. That's when she's got the hammer down, when she's got that uh, chain tied to you. <laughs> when you are locked up, locked, stock, and barrel. Yeah, that's a scary I one. I can't believe it. When are you going to grow up? I thought you would grow. I thought we'd get married. You would grow up. <laughs> well, right? Thanks, right? Thank you guys for, uh, right? Am I right? Thing. That's what she's going to do, right? Oh, yeah. No, I wouldn't be a bit surprised. So, you know, Brian, you got to think hard before you get married. If you're a pot smoker and she's not, think twice. Can you yeah, put that in a prenup? Yeah, change our ways. Well, I you, you, I I get it enforced. That's the problem. All right, Brian. I say dumper. <laughs> oh no, I'm not going to do that. Uh, you you'll find out the hard way, Ryan. Yeah, I might, but uh, maybe that's why I can't mouth. conceive. You're always stoned. <laughs> well, we got to check your sperm count. Goes too. I don't smoke when I'm with her. I do well again. When you're married to her, you're going to be with her twenty four seven. 
<laughs> yep. And then she's going to start getting into under the hood, getting into the guts of the thing there. Yeah. I thought you would give it up once we got married. <laughs> you make her sound so awful. <laughs> <laughs> she really is. We're going to have children and you've got your bog standing out there in the living room kitchen and coffee table. It's sitting right there. What am I going to tell our kid? Oh, man, I tell you, anybody who leaves it sitting out on their living room table, if they don't have a card, they're just asking for trouble. They're stupid. <laughs> they're stupid. Guys who walk down the street with it in their pockets, wearing T-shirts with leaves on them, are idiots. Sorry, <laughs> but leave it at home. Don't if, if you look like a smoker, don't invite trouble. All right, Ryan, thank you for that. I appreciate the call. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Here's Dave on the Tom Likens Show for our guests, Steve Bloom and Charlie Halperin. Their book, Pot Culture. Hello. Hello. Yes. Hey, Tom, how are you? Do you care, Dave? Not really. We'll just sit here. Hello. Let's try it again. Hello. Hey, is Dave Hello. there? Dave, you're about to reach the three hello limit. Are you there, Tom? <laughs> Thank you for the call. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Mark on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Mark. Hello there. Long, long time listener. First I time. love that. Love your show. Thank you. Yeah, I love it a little bit more, man. I've been smoking it forever now. Um, I'm glad to finally hear that somebody took the initiative, you know, to one of us needs to do so, to uh, put out an encyclopedia. Uh, you know, it was because I wanted to add a little something to that. I wasn't sure what that was in there. Um, whenever I'm at work and, uh, you know, me and my bunch of my buddies, we always like to get high at work, you know, during lunch and all that stuff. Uh, we like to make a little joke about it and, uh, call it getting motivated so i'm like you know or anything like they ask us how we're doing we're like oh boss we're so motivated today and you know like uh, it's like spanish for weed so that's that's kind of fun with it you know so but uh in the next printing <laughs> iowa your phone was cutting out about every 10 seconds so we missed about every fourth or fifth word you said but it sounded like you were amused yourself but that's really all that mattered right mark anyway Guys, thank you so much for coming in. Great to see you. Thank you, Tom. Thanks a lot, Tom. Steve Bloom and Charlie Halper. The book is Pot Culture, the A to Z Guide to Stoner Language and Life. It's available in your favorite bookstore. It's available online. Or find out more about it at the website. It's potculturebook.com. The Tom Likas Show.